Well, hi there. You must be an AP World History student, one of the few, the proud, the bold, the dashing, the courageous. Hi, I'm Mr. Stewart. And here I am, working on our summer assignment, the 100 plus must know dates of AP World History. This is a list put together by expert AP World History teachers, teachers way more experienced and expertise than me. It contains dates from each of the six official AP World History periods. And our job this summer is to come to school with this entire list memorized. It's also a list that, at the time of me making this video, I don't have memorized. So I'm going to be doing this work with you over the course of the summer, and I'll be teaching you along the way how to memorize a list of 100 plus things. Some of you may already have memorization techniques that you've used in the past, and you're welcome to use those. But for those of you who are like, wait, huh? Memorize 100 plus dates? Why would I do that? What is that? Tell me more. That's what this video is for. So all that we're doing, <laughs> all, <laughs> is memorizing each one of these dates. You'll know that you're done with this assignment when you can do three things successfully. Thing one, you'll be able to hear any of these dates and tell me the event that corresponds to it. Thing two, you'll be able to hear any of these events and tell me the date that corresponds to it. Thing three, this is the hard one, you'll be able to receive a blank sheet of just a date line and an event line, and I can say to you, 8000 BCE to 600 CE, what are the must-know dates from that period, and you'll just be able to list them off. Date, event, date, event, date, event, date, event. Intense, right? So how should I do this, Mr. Stewart? Well, that's a great question. Great question. Let me walk you through how I'm doing this. Remember, I haven't memorized these in advance, so I'm doing this right along with you. Step one, write down the exact date from your worksheet with all the must-know dates on it. So if it says 221 BCE, write down 221 BCE on one side of an index card. I would also recommend in a different marker color writing down the period that it's from. So for example, the first chunk of dates are from the 8000 BCE to 600 CE period. That will just help you to organize these cards because I recommend memorizing them in period chunks. So not just trying to do all 130 something dates, but chunk them out into periods. It'll just make it a little bit easier. Once you've written the date down, step two is to write down the event description. Write it down exactly as the worksheet has it. Don't get creative, don't shorten it, don't make it longer. Just put that exact information down. Because this is the word for word stuff that we're gonna try to memorize. Now, once you've got an, a set of cards written down for an entire period, I'd recommend stopping and starting the memorization process. And that looks like this. What we're gonna do first is just go through our period set of cards. This is my set from 8000 BCE to 6000 CE. Let me just get to the to the front. I've got them in order and I'm just going to memorize them one by one. I want you to do it like this. Read out loud the date, then the event, then the date again. So um, C 8000 BCE, the C, sometimes you'll see that. You'll see C period, then a date, or C A period, then a date. That just means circa. It means around that time. So circa 8000 BCE, beginnings of agriculture, circa 8000 BCE. Before you move on to the next card, try to be able to say that from memory. So circa 8000 BCE, beginnings of agriculture, circa 8000 BCE. The doing it from memory part is important because that's when you're strengthening those synapses, those connections, without the aid of anything else. My, my uh, memory part of my brain doesn't have to act when I'm just reading the card. That's just the reading part of my brain. So you want to make sure that you do the memory part too. So circa 8000 BCE, beginnings of agriculture, circa 8000 BCE. Once you can do that, move on to the next one. Circa 3000 BCE, beginnings of Bronze Age, early sieves, circa 3000 BCE. Circa 3000 BCE, beginnings of Bronze Age, early sieves, circa 3000 BCE. 
And we're just going to do that and go through the whole exact set. So what we basically just did is created the beginnings of these uh, date sandwiches in our brain. And the reason that we do the date, then the event, then the date, is because the date is actually the harder thing to remember, as you're going to find out soon. Because those numbers have way less information for us to latch onto than like the beginnings of agriculture. But the beginning of, of agriculture, you're picturing farming or something. But when I just say circa 8000 BCE, you're picturing nothing at first. That's why we go date, event, date. Once you've gone through your whole set and you've just memorized um, doing that date, event, date for the whole set just one time, I want you to move on to step two of the memorization process. So step two is flip through your cards, date side up, and just say to yourself, 184 BCE. Um, I don't remember what that was. Fall of Mauryan Dynasty. 184 BCE, Fall of Mauryan Dynasty. 184 BCE, Fall of Mauryan Dynasty. 184 BCE, Fall of Mauryan Dynasty. And I move on. 32 CE, Beginnings of Christianity. Sweet. 32 CE, beginnings of Christianity. 32 CE, beginnings of Christianity. 180 CE. Um, beginning of Han Dynasty. End of Pax Romana. 180 CE. End of Pax Romana. 180 CE. End of Pax Romana. And I just want you to keep going through your set, doing that until you can get every single one with just looking at the date, you can come up with the event. And then each time that you do it, make sure you do date, event, date, date, event, day. And if possible, say it out loud to yourself. It's going to help you to strengthen that connection inside of your brain. Step three of the memorization process. So the first step was just going through and reading them and then doing it from memory. The second step was going through with the date side and letting the date side cue your recall of the event side. The third step is going to be to go through and on the event side, use the event side to encourage recall of the date. So, see, I've got a lot of work to do too. Fall of Rome. Uh, Fall of Rome, I think, was 430 CE, uh, 476 CE. So 476 CE, Fall of Rome, 476 CE. And when I do that, I'm looking at my event side. 476 CE, Fall of Rome, 476 CE. Beginning of Trans-Saharan trade routes, uh, uh, 430 CE. Was that what I was thinking about? Fourth century. Fourth century, beginnings of Trans-Saharan trade routes, fourth century. And so on. We're going to just do that. Do that. The final thing that I would say before you've sort of mastered a period, before you mastered a period chunk, is to use um, a sheet of lined paper or just any sheet of paper and write down the number of dates that are in that period. So for example, I'm doing the 8000 BCE to uh, 600 CE period and there are there are 18 dates in that period. So I want you to actually write down on a sheet of paper Number 1 through 18. Okay, and I want you to try to write down date, event, date, event, date, event. From memory, no cards. Okay? This is going to be painful at first. And you're going to feel like you need to quit this class before you can get embarrassed in the fall. But stop yourself. All that stands between you and memorizing these dates is a little bit of hard work. So. Do it the first time. Write as many dates as you can from memory on that sheet of paper, date, event. And then go ahead and use your cards to fill in any gaps. Actually write it down. And then do a new sheet of paper. Number it 1 through 18. And try to do it again. And then do a new sheet of paper. Number it 1 through 18. And try to do it again. Wait, 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 one more thing, one more thing. I forgot this, and this is really important. 
There's going to be a lot of dates on here and terms that you've never heard of, like Mauryan Dynasty. What is that? NATO. What is that? Uh, U.S. Emancip Emancipation Proclamation. What is that? No, hopefully, hopefully you remember what that is. Look, when you come across things that are curious, things that kind of make you wonder what is that, or things that you're just like, I've never heard of that, jump on the internet, go to the library if you have to, but get on the internet and just do a Google search. Okay, this is a thing that Wikipedia is great for because Wikipedia will give you more information than you could ever want. And most of that information nowadays is pretty legit. And that Wikipedia will tell you like, what was the big deal about the Mauryan dynasty? Or what was NATO? Or what was that US Emancipation Proclamation again? So what I'm saying is use your curiosity to motivate you to learn about these dates. Don't just memorize the dates, but if you're not sure what Smith writing The Wealth of Nations was all about, then look it up and just get an understanding for yourself. So you can kind of start to tell yourself the story of world history. The story is going to really help us. And that's the point of these dates. So memorize the dates, but also do some self-research as you go. That's what's up. I would recommend spending 15 minutes a day on this every day of the summer. That is a great way to memorize because every time that you sleep, your brain consolidates information and then the next day uses it again. But I would go through this process for each of the period sets all the way up to the last date, which is WikiLeaks Arab Spring Democracy, and just do that. Do that for every single one. A couple more tips. Make sure you reward yourself when you hit a milestone. When you memorize an entire period and can write them on the sheet of paper, give yourself a reward. Do something that you enjoy. Play an hour of video games or go get an ice cream cone. I don't know what you I don't know what you do, but do something that you like. Reward yourself as you make progress. Second, make sure you're going back and reviewing the cards and the periods that you've mastered. So when you go to period two and you do the paper, make sure that you're going back and just once a day or once every couple days. Do period one, number a sheet of paper one through 18, and make sure that you can continue to do period one. Look, I want you to remember something. What you're trying to do is historic. At the end of your freshman year of high school, you'll be able to say without lying that you did something no freshman in our town has ever done before. In fact, you did something that only um, very few freshmen do in the entire country. That's something that you can be proud of. That's something that you can uh, learn from and take into your life and use as you go on to do more and bigger and harder things. All right. I want you to be successful. That is why I became a teacher. And so this class is going to teach us a ton about world history. It's going to teach us a ton about how to use our brains to achieve really difficult achievements, but it's also going to teach us just how to be better at life, how to be successful. This will be a course in the history of the world and in making the history of our lives. Take care. Be in touch. Let me know if you need help. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Have a great summer. Let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. Do the work. Every day. Make it a habit. Be awesome. Work hard. Don't forget. We'll be ready for this in September. See you later.